let's take a look at how the Gaussian mixture class does with the uh, arrow data set. So we're still working here in the same notebook as before. I have both the five cluster data set and the arrow data set loaded up. So, so we're all uh, set to go. So let's go ahead and construct a model. Oops. We're going to start by looking at uh, the two Gaussian solution, and we're going to set n and init to one. And our data set is in the x variable. So that learning process went very quickly. And let's ask what the predictions are. And plot those. OK, so there we go. So this is our two cluster case. Again, we're in a scenario where with two clusters, we can only really d draw one dividing line across the space. And one side is going to be purple, and the other side is going to be red. And in this case, since the data are largely aligned horizontally here, that, that's uh, how things got partitioned. So there's the center for the purple class, which is what we uh, expect. It's, it's uh, located right at 0. So, so it's the center here, and it's also the center along uh, this dimension here within purple, and likewise for, for red. OK, so let's go ahead and kick this up to, to 3 and plot that. OK, so what's really interesting here is that uh, the shaft of our arrow uh, is being occupied entirely by uh, one of our Gaussians in the mixture. And in fact, you can see it's it's very it's a very narrow Gaussian, and uh, it also has a high variance along the horizontal dimension. And in fact, even after we get beyond the shaft, you can see that there are some points that are being labeled as purple. Uh, in fact, there's a point out here that's being labeled as as purple as well. Uh, it might it must be aligned just right. Uh, so, so we have high variance here, and we can see that going out into the rest of the data. Uh, and then the other two clusters, one gets assigned to the middle of the arrowhead, and the other gets assigned to the, the middle of the, uh, the red. The fact that uh, the, this particular point out here is being labeled as purple, what that means is that from a Malhalanobis distance perspective, this point is closer to this point here than it is to uh, this particular point here. This particular partitioning of our data set is uh, quite different from what we've seen in our other uh, clustering algorithms. And in particular, this is the first time that with just three clusters, we've covered the shaft as one unit and, uh, and then left one cluster e on each side here. In, uh, in with our other clustering mechanisms, uh, what we've tended to do is uh, there might be one on the shaft, but uh, say the red one here might also occupy part of the, the shaft as well. So, so, that's, so that's an interesting difference. It really is capturing a bit more of the, the shape of the uh, distribution. It's really taking advantage of the fact that there's very little variance along the vertical in, for the, uh, for the uh, purple cluster. All right, so let's go ahead and kick this up. To, uh, to four clusters and see what the algorithm does. And here it's now using that fourth cluster to occupy part of the, uh, the arrowhead. What happens when we kick it up to five? OK, so, so now it's, it's doing similar, uh, similar kinds of things on, on the other side. Uh, but in, in all of those cases, it's still leaving one cluster to handle the entire shaft. I'm curious now, as we get up to seven clusters, what happens? OK, so at this point now, the shaft is being occupied by uh, two clusters. Though what's interesting is that they, the, the two of them uh, sort of terminate mostly uh, at the end of the shaft, although we extend a little bit uh, beyond that uh, here. And we extend on the left-hand side a little bit in, into the space uh, as well. 
And again, that's happening because we have pretty high variance uh, across that horizontal. The variance isn't quite as high as before, so you're not seeing, say, cyan points out in this region over here. Um, they're all being captured by the tan and the, the purple uh, clusters. All right, so I encourage you to play with a bit more with this uh, particular data set uh, and, uh, and give a cluster, a clustering a try with uh, some of your uh, favorite uh, data sets as well. So this ends our live demo of uh, d doing uh, clustering with uh, Gaussian mixture models. And I've got a few more uh, things to say about uh, clustering before we're uh, done.